Six axis bar charts are great to compare two different measures across multiple values in a dimension. So you can do the same thing with a column chart, but when you have a lot of data points, like here you see movies, toys, games, audio, and maybe 20 more, a vertical scroll is sometimes results in a better visual than a horizontal scroll as you get in a column chart. So to use this Power BI custom visual, once you are at the PBI visited page for the visual, you can click on modify visual to get directly to the editor and start using it, start changing the way the visual looks. Alternatively, you could download the existing custom visual and then try it on your Power BI dashboard directly. Now, do note that the default download is uh, restricted to about three months of free use and post that you would either have to continue using that visual with a PBI Wizardit logo or you could pay and download the actual visual that you want. So I'll start with showing how to modify the visual to match your exact requirement. So if I click on this modify visual, now you'd notice that I straight away get signed in. If you're a first time user, you would have to register using your email ID and then access this screen. You would also have to activate it. So please keep that in mind. Um, if you don't get that email, let us know. When I come into the editor, the first screen that I see is the data screen and a tab and I have a visual tab next to it. If you want to understand all the options in detail, uh, we encourage you to look at the introductory video for our tool, um, which is there in YouTube as well. The data, um, currently we only take uh, CSV data. The purpose of the data tab is to really build a sample visual that you can then use in Power BI. So this sample data is not going to be linked to your visual permanently. Once you download or export the visual to your Power BI, whichever is your Power BI data source will be used for the visual. So if you are using a SQL data source or another Excel file or another JSON file, you would be able to see those values and not the sample values you use to create your custom visual. So right now we are using a sample CSV file. In order to change this and see your own data, you could click on this button here. It will take you to the, your computer explorer and then you find out whichever folder the CSV file is in and you can upload this. If you're not sure how to create a CSV file for your existing data, um, you could simply do a Google search and find that out. It's very easy. So now once you have your data, then you go to the visual tab and here is where all the magic happens. So in this visual tab, everything, all the elements that you see are controlled using these two panels. The panel on the left is entirely about what data do you show in this visual. So here I can see there is a series zero, series one, both show a bar sort of appearance like this. And so I know that these are two bar charts. You could change to a bubble, line, area, pie, anything that you want. But since this is a dual x-axis bar chart, we'll keep focusing on just the bar aspect of it. So if I expand series zero, I can decide what should be there in the x-axis, um, the value for legend, uh, for label, tooltip, bar details, colors, etc. Now one thing you have to make sure in this case is that the y-axis has to be the same field. We provide a lot of flexibility and you need to be sure that accidentally you are not using a second field because it will break the visual. So once you have y-axis as the same field on series zero and series one, which is category in this case, the x-axis you are free to use whatever other field that you have. On the right side, you have a lot of formatting options. The thing to note here is that the Y1, which is the common axis, and then have two X axis. One of those represents the blue bar here, and the other one represents the red bar here. Actual bar colors, the way we look at this is, these are two different plots. Think of, there is a blue plot, which is superimposed or merged with a red plot. 
So these two plots can be individually controlled. You can change one plot without affecting the second one. So this is very powerful once you get to understand how to exactly use it. The big difference between this plot section and this x1, x2 section is that x1, x2 is more about these axes. So the top axis which shows 0 to 40 in K and then the bottom axis 0 to 40 directly relates to the x-axis value you select here, project count, and the value you select here, test count. So if I go to x1 and I want to find out which is x1, which is x2 in here, you could simply do a small change and find out. So for example, it says show axis line. If I check it off, this went away. So I know that this is my x1 axis, this is my x2 axis. So let me put that back in. Now if we look at the different options available here, and most of these are self-explanatory, uh, that we have uh, other tutorials as well as um, documentation on our website, which you can take a look to find out more details. Uh, but the important piece here is the anchored width. So the way to think about this visual is that you have two bar charts, a blue bar chart and a red bar chart, and you are telling the visual that my top axis and my bottom axis are both anchored to this y-axis. So you see anchored with y1. Similarly, if I go to x2, this is anchored with y1, as well as overlapped with x1. Let me close that. So as I said, there are a lot more options to play around. Um, everything that the Power BI tool allows a user to change through custom programming. Uh, we have given, I would say, 90% of those options that we could manage. So then if I go to plot, I can change the colors in here from red to, let's say, gray. Um, I could change, what else should I change? Uh, you could increase the width or decrease it. So most of the things are here, click and play. You could see an option, click it, change it, and you would see a real-time rendering of how your final visual would look like. Before I move on, there is just one more thing. So the tooltip page, both the labels and tooltips are customizable. Um, you can choose what all you want to show in the tooltip, um, unlike Power BI. Once you, have, you are done with your changes, you could save th these changes. So let me save this and then export the visual. When you export, you have a lot of options to export. So you could provide what versions you, you want to export it as. This is helpful when you want to keep a track of what all changes you have made in that version. So you could provide additionally a description, uh, the author name, especially to figure out who exactly exported this visual. You can provide your own custom visual icon as well, and then on the fields section, you are allowed to give just a little bit of information about the field, uh, create restrictions if you want to. Normally, we would recommend that unless you are very sure, leave it as any. And then on the format section, this is where you get to see what all options you want to retain in your visual. Now, we generally advise some sort of balanced approach wherein you are not taking in all of these options, but the ones you think you would need in future. The only exception would be if you plan to do a one-time download by paying the $4.99 amount, I would say export all options because you are not going to get a second chance to export it without paying again. So if you are doing a single one-time export, we recommend take all options. If you are on a subscription plan and you can change it when you want, it's better to select a few options so that on your Power BI screen, the options are not overwhelming. That said, once you have decided on your options, you click on Save and Export. Uh, this takes about a minute or two, depending on the load on the server. So once this is done, you would be able to get the exported PBI Viz file and directly use that in your Power BI visual. So I'll give it a few seconds to Okay, so the file is ready to download. I'll save the file into the downloads folder. 
So I'll keep the default name as it is, save. And let's go to Power BI and then update it. I've already got that same sample CSV in here. So what I need to do next, um, I had an existing file, let's remove that. So I click on this, remove a visual, remove that, and then export it again. You don't have to do that. I'm just doing this to show you the exact process. If you already know how to export, import a visual to Power BI, you can skip this step entirely and get started with the visual editor. Okay, so this is done. Click on this and add in category to Y. Then add in project count, test count. Expand this. Okay, so now uh, we have the exact same visual. Uh, of course, you, if you would be using your own data, you would see a different visual in here. I, I can see that all the formatting options are in there. And you would notice that because I selected fewer options, it's still a little bit high maybe, but it's manageable. If you select all the options, this would be probably a scrolling options bar. So I can do the same things, change legends or change position of legends. Okay, so this is how you edit a custom visual with the PBI Viz Edit tool and do any of any changes or any modifications that suit your need and finally export it to use it uh, permanently.